Hey guys. In this video, I will teach you how to create a high dynamic range image from a single photo. I took this picture a year ago. I really love this picture because of the beautiful foreground and sunset. But I did use the auto exposure bracketing to take three photos of different exposure, which is the normal method to create the usual high dynamic range photo. So let us just create an HDR image using this single JPEG photo. First, let us open the image in the Photoshop. Before doing HDR processing, we need to do basic correction first on this photo. As you can see, the photo is not aligned horizontally, a little bit warped due to the wide angle view, and there are several lens flares. Let us remove them first to achieve a professional looking photo. To edit this photo, let us double click it. This will become layer 0. Let us create a horizontal guideline for easier alignment. To rotate this image, select it in the layer panel and then click Ctrl plus T to activate the transform image function. Let us rotate this image clockwise. Let us try rotating by 1 degree. Uh oh. It is not enough, let us increase rotation to 2 degrees. Let us increase a little more to 2.2 degrees. Now due to the rotation, there are white uncovered portion in the corner. To cover them up, we need to scale up the image. Let us try scaling up to 105% for both width and height. Let us increase scale up to 106%. It is now OK. Let us apply the transformation by clicking this move tool. Let us click apply transformation. Let us remove the horizontal guide as it is no longer needed. Next, let us remove the image somewhat roundness appearance, to make it look more natural to the eyes. Uh oh. I might need the horizontal guideline in this processing, so let us use it again. We go to the edit menu, select the transform, and select warp. You can play with this tool to transform the image. For this photo, let us just warp this portion downward a little bit, to make it more flat which is more natural to the human eye. It is a very subtle change, and the change may not be noticeable. But let us go with it. Next, let us remove the lens flares in several places. We will use the clone tool do that. Let us zoom in first the areas where there are lens flares. Using the clone tool, go to the area which you want to copy. Click Out button, then brush the areas with lens flares to erase them. Continue erasing the lens flare using the same method in the other locations too. Let us now create the high dynamic range image. First, let us create a copy of the layer 0 by pressing Ctrl plus J. Let us rename this new layer into darker, which will be used to darken the upper portion of the image. To create a darker image of the upper portion, let us change the blending mode of this newly copied layer to multiply. The overall image will become darker after this. This is just normal. But notice that the upper portion is now darker, and the sky has now more details than the original picture. We want to use this darker effect only on the sky portion. So let us mask the lower portion where this darker effect is not needed. Click mask below the layer panel, and add a gradient mask. Be sure to select the mask in this task. You can try playing with the gradient mask, by drawing vertical or slanted line, and see which is best to mask the lower portion. 
we only want to apply the darkening effect to the sky portion. We want to apply the mask between the border of the sky and the sea. Let us create again a horizontal guide to aid us in masking. Apply the gradient mask from the sky portion to the sea, equally dividing the line between them. This will result to a natural looking gradient in that location. Let us remove the guide line. As you can see, the darkening resulted also to very dark shade on the hillside on the right side. We want to leave some details on this hillside, so let us mask out the darkening effect on this portion. Click the brush tool, and with the foreground color set to black, let us apply brush on this hillside portion, to reveal some details. Continue masking until we see some details. Now. Let us create also a brighter image in the lower portion. Select again the original layer 0, and make a copy by clicking Ctrl plus J. Let us rename this layer to Brighter, which we will use to brighten the lower part of the image. To create a brighter image, let us change the blending mode of this layer to Screen. The overall image will become lighter, including the darkened sky portion. We want to brighten only the lower portion, therefore let us add a mask to this layer. Click the mask below the layer panel. Then let us add again a gradient to this mask. With the foreground set to white, and the background set to black, draw a line from the lower to the upper portion of the image. You can try playing with this gradient line, and see which line achieves the best result. Well, it seems a vertical line drawn between the sea and the sky looks good. So let us again create a horizontal guide for that. Let us draw an upward line, ensuring that the line will be equally divided between the horizontal guide line. Here, we want again to show more details on the hillside on the right side. So let us apply some brightening effect on that. With the color set to white, click the brush tool and brush off the black mask on this portion. You will notice that the hillside will become brighter, showing more details. Let us continue brushing until we are satisfied with the result. Next, let us saturate the color more to achieve those reddish sunset impression. Click the topmost layer, add a hue, saturation adjustment layer. In the saturation slider, let us try adding saturation value of 20. Well, I feel it is too much. Let us reduce this to 10. For the final processing, let us sharpen this image. We will use the lab sharpening technique for this example. Select all the image, and create a merged image in a separate layer by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E at the same time. Hide the other layers, and let us just focus on this merged layer during sharpening. Now, select the merged layer called Layer 1, go to the Image menu, Select Mode, and select Lab Color. Converting the image from RGB to Lab will create a different channel named Lightness, A, and B. Go to the channel, and select the layer called Lightness. We will apply sharpening to this layer. With this lightness layer selected, go to the filter menu, click sharpen, then click unsharp mask. You can play with the amount, radius and threshold sliders to achieve the optimum sharpening of the image. Increasing the amount slider value sharpens the image. But let us just set the percent value to 100. Increasing the radius also sharpens the image. But let us use 5.0 pixels. However, the threshold level does the opposite. Increasing it reduces the sharpness. So let us just set the value to a minimum. Let us set this to 1. 
Let us click again the lab channel and click the layers tab. Let us convert back the lab image to RGB. Click again the image menu, click the mode and then click RGB. This is the comparison of the before and after image. You can see the difference. Our edited image has now more dynamic range, has more saturated color and sharper than the original image. That's all guys, and I hope you learned something from my tutorial. Please give me likes, leave comments and subscribe to my channel if you find this helpful. That's all and bye bye.